Hey everyone, welcome back to this late night edition at Nintendo Prime. We got a bevy of stories to get to. I uh, wanted to make sure I got to these before we enter tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, buckle up, sit tight. Uh, reminder, we do have a handful of giveaways going on at the moment. Head down to the pinned comment or the description. And if you're new to Nintendo Prime, why not hit that subscribe button, drop a like, leave a comment. Let me know what game are you looking forward to most for Nintendo Switch in 2022. All right, let's get into our very first story. And this deals with Majora's Mask. So Nintendo Switch Online Service just had the addition of Banjo-Kazooie added. And you know what? Nintendo decided to let us know what's coming next. In February, we are gonna be having Majora's Mask added in. and. I find this to obviously be an excellent addition to the Nintendo Switch Online service, Majora's Mask being one of my favorite Zelda games, I'm a big Zelda fan. I will note though that there seems to be a narrative that Nintendo is maybe um, figuring out this Nintendo Switch Online service thing by still giving us one N64 game per month and not letting us know even when it's coming in that month. I still have the same criticisms I've always had for this online service. Um, I'm glad that at least for three straight months now they've let us know ahead of time that we're getting a game. Uh, but we've had this happen before. The NES for X amount of months was getting games. Uh, the SNES for X amount of months was getting games and then they just stopped. So I'm not gonna give too much credit for this, but hey, Majora's Mask is what is on slate next. So if you are a Nintendo Switch Online uh, member in terms of the expansion pass anyways, you have that to look forward to next month. All right, moving on, a major game that I've been looking forward to ever since I saw it behind the scenes at E3 2019. That's how long ago it's been since we've seen this game had a massive, I think it was like a six minute like thing drop today, uh, announcing that Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is releasing on all platforms, including Nintendo Switch, on April 5th. Uh, this is obviously excellent. I think the game looks great. It might be the greatest Lego game ever made, and beyond that, maybe the best Star Wars game ever game. Uh, ever made like uh, back at E3 2019 when I got to see it behind closed doors it just looked amazing and nothing shown today makes it look like the game is any worse actually it just looks better and better of course you know we can't just have that be it because after it was announced stories broke that this game and the developers behind it actually put the employee through the employees sorry several of them through extreme crunch this is sad to see for a game that's been delayed multiple times, that crunch was a really big thing. Uh, and apparently it was so bad that 40 employees left the company in 2021, which is a lot to leave. That doesn't mean the game is any less excellent for it, but it does make you obviously wonder a little bit, what are the conditions like at the studio behind it? Um, I'm sure the end product is amazing, but was it worth it? I guess, you know, to some that worked on the game, it, it, it wasn't. But uh, hey, it's coming April 5th. So, I mean, I don't know. You guys make whatever decision you want to make on getting it. It's going to be pretty hard for me to decide not to get it since I've been looking forward to it so much. But uh, I don't know, man. I just really want to see this crunch thing get better across the whole industry. Next up, Nintendo did a really weird thing. So Nintendo of Japan decided, you know what? We want to tweet out and we want to show people how to remove games from their Nintendo Switch because, you know, they can't figure that out on their own. Okay, fine, whatever. It's been five years. At this point, I think it's pretty clear how to remove games off your Switch. But the weird thing is they showed you how to do it by showing you how to remove Mario 35. Now look, removing Mario 35 isn't like the biggest deal because it's a game we can't play anymore, but it's also kind of a nice harsh reminder that Nintendo created this really cool Tetris 99 like game for Mario, had it come out for Mario's 35th, and then just for no real logical reason, just nuked it because the 35th anniversary is over as if Mario 35 still couldn't exist and be good outside of it. It was also like a free game that was part of Nintendo Switch Online. So you actually hurt the value of Nintendo Switch Online shutting it down. Very strange thing. And obviously with them doing this, and it reminds us that, hey, Mario 35 isn't coming back. I hate these temporary games like this. There's not a whole lot of them out there. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think it's just, it's bad PR. Like it's reminding people that you got rid of something that you probably should have never got rid of. It, it just hurts. It hurts seeing it brought up again because I, I really do miss Mario 35. Next up, we have a software sale and um, hardware sale update for Japan for last week. Uh, these sales go through the 16th and uh, 
Well, no surprise in the software charts that it's pretty much all Switch titles. At number one, we have Mario Party Superstars moving 22,108 units. That has now moved 793,683 units. At number two, we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl uh, moving 19,129 units. That has moved 2,454,455 units. At number three, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, that has moved 18,505 units. That is now at 4,713,464 total. At number four, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still clocking in there at 17,684. That has now moved 4,373,799 units. At number five, we have the Nintendo Switch version of Minecraft moving 12,986 units. That has moved 2,475,523 units. At number six, we have Animal Crossing New Horizons moving 11,948 units. That has now moved 7,149,000. 149,014 units. At number seven, we have Big Brain Academy Brain vs. Brain uh, that moved 10,895 units. It has now moved 223,428 total units. At number eight, we have Ring Fit Adventure still clocking in there at 10,064 units. It has now moved 3 million. 44,438 units. At number nine, Momotaro Dentetsu. We're going to stop there because I know I can't pronounce this game. Uh, from Konami for Nintendo Switch movie, 9,864 units. It has now moved 2,570,479 units. At number 10 is Clubhouse Games. 51 Worldwide Classics. That is moved 6,845 units and is getting closer and closer to a million at 906,012 units. Hardware-wise, we obviously have some interesting stuff to talk about here. Nintendo moved over 94,000 Nintendo Switches. The number one spot is Nintendo Switch OLED at 48,824 units. It has now moved 993,000 units, so should be over a million um, as of this week. Uh, the base Switch model moved 29,131 units at the number two spot. That has now moved 17,800,000 67,356 total uh, base model switches. The Switch lights at number three at 16,568,000. It has now moved 4,497,478 of just that model. PlayStation 5 uh, moved 12,996 units. It has now moved over a million units in uh, in Japan at 1,090,990. Xbox Series S is at 1,848 at number 5, moving 57,446 units in Japan. Uh, PlayStation 5 All Digital version is moved 1,457 at number 6. That has moved 204,152 units. And new 2DS X, uh, LL chimes in at number 7, followed by the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation. Four. So that's uh, some really interesting stuff anyways in terms of the sales. Obviously, Nintendo is just dominating and continues to own Japan. Um, congrats for PlayStation 5, obviously getting over a mil. But still, um, yeah, I don't know. Japan's literally just owned by Nintendo. And the numbers, I mean, I, I, I'm not even, I'm almost numb to how impressive the numbers are every week. Because it's just been happening for five years. So good on you, Nintendo. Lastly... I wanted to just, this is less of a story. This is more of a reminding you to smile today. Uh, I've had a rough day for various reasons. Uh, none of it related to anything online, uh, but I've been noticing when I was going online looking for stories, a lot of bickering, a lot of fighting, a lot of sadness going out there. Whether it's people upset that Pokemon Legends Arceus is fully leaked, whether it's people upset about Microsoft potentially acquiring, um, you know, Activision Blizzard, and then some of the controversy around like Phil Spencer's, did he say that Sony's going to continue to get future Call of Duty games, or is he just talking about existing Call of Duty games? He said, I was on a phone call with Sony and it's still not really fully clear and it probably won't be fully clear until after the purchase is finalized and then we see what happens with Call of Duty. Obviously news out of Blizzard that oh they're going to be really active with games but then can we trust them because Blizzard has had a history of not doing that. I There's just been so much like back and forth bickering. People seem just really upset and sad today so I wanted to everyone to remind it hey you know what Put the smile on, the beautiful smell of nature if you get a chance to go out and take some of that in and don't live in a city. Um, maybe if you do, you know, you can go to a local park or something. Uh, maybe it's just the people in your life that matter the most. Maybe it's just watching a good show, playing a good game, uh, being physically active, eating, you know, something that tastes good. I don't know. Whatever it is you have to be thankful for and smile about, do it. We all have our rough points in life. And as I said, gosh knows, Today has been one of the more difficult days for me uh, in 2022. Um, let's just say being a parent isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Uh, but you know what? 
I'm trying really hard myself to remind myself to smile and not, you know, circle down that rabbit hole of evil. Of evil! All right, folks. So put a smile on and find something to be happy about today. Tonight, tomorrow morning, whenever you're watching. All right, folks. I'm Nathaniel Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.